With the rising popularity of Chinese brands in the SUV market, it would be a fair assessment to say that Bucky's may soon follow suit and probably saturate the market too. In fact, someone said that in three years' time, 40% of automobile sales will be from a Chinese manufacturer. And that someone was JAC's CEO. And today we're with their range topping T9. From the top, there really is no denying that this looks quite attractive. It is aggressive, purposeful, and sort of predatory in its looks. And that's exactly what you need from a biking. You have a big grille with chrome slats across. You also have these sleek designed lines over here, which are LED integrated, as well as fog lines down here. That huge grill also sports a big, bold JAC badge, so you will not miss that coming in your rear view mirror. It also has this black, bold border around the lights as well as the grill. And I do think up top here, it's going to catch a lot of those stone chips, which is actually going to save your paintwork. So design-wise, this looks incredible. And I will say that this might actually be one of the better looking buckies out there. And I'm gonna say that with my chest, yeah. On the side, it is complemented by bold black wheel arches, running boards and a style bar to round off its rugged appearance. It also sits on 18-inch alloy wheels with a floral-inspired design. The rear still looks good, although not as aggressive as the front. I will say that I am quite glad that they did not write a big, bold red JAC here in the back. They kept it simple and de-embossed, so it makes it look very uncluttered and quite premium, in fact. This is the Super Lux and it gets all the nice bells and whistles and inside you really can feel it because you are surrounded by pure leather. I mean look at these leather seats, nice red stitching all around it. The seats are also electronically adjustable. You also have leather all on the dashboard. In the middle a 10.4 inch screen. The screen is quite big which is what we have seen now with Chinese automakers. If the screen is not big, it's probably not a Chinese car. And I do feel like a lot of people might not enjoy that, although I don't mind it at all. The graphics do look good, the colors are popping, but I do feel like in sunlight, it does not look as visible, which is a little bit of a problem for me. But all in all, quite a great system to use, easily navigatable, and you have your Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. Talking about you know compatibility down here, you do have your charging pad. 12 volt socket as well as two USB ports. The steering wheel is very uncluttered in terms of all its buttons over here. In the middle you have a chrome border around your gear lever which is quite nice. You have buttons here to control your drive modes, park assist. You also get two cup holders as well as some storage right here in the center. One feature I absolutely enjoy in a car has to be a sunroof and I did not think that the T9 would actually have one. I mean a buggy that has a sunroof that has to be an absolute first and I really quite enjoy that. The rear is also quite a nice place to be with those leather seats as well as the red stitching and then of course you do get your cup holders or you can just make this an armrest if you don't have a middle passenger. Space is not a problem. I do have enough leg room as well as headroom. I do feel like somebody taller might have a little bit of an issue, but then other than that, I do feel like it is quite sufficient. Quite enjoy it. I actually could do a long trip sitting over here in the bag, presidential style. If there's ever a time where I enjoyed driving a buggy, it has to be this era because buggies turned from workhorses into luxury and leisure vehicles. And as I'm driving, it really does feel so effortless. It's smooth enough, it is absorbing those road imperfections quite well. 
the automatic gearbox is finding its place in quite well and I don't feel the car really pushing or sort of struggling. It has enough, you know, power and talk about power. Under the hood is a two litre four cylinder engine that's going to give you 125 kilowatts and 410 newton meters of torque, which is quite enough and it pulls the car along quite nicely. Consumers of long standing brands such as Ford and Toyota, you know, they big loyalist and it's going to take so much to sway them away from their beloved buckies but with new buckies costing anywhere from around a million rand at a price point of 560k because this starts at 560k what will it take for loyalists from ford from vw to jump into a car such as this one the t9 that has the looks it's got all the tech similar specs to what you know other bikies have and it has the 4x4 capabilities with prices going up every year i do feel that this might just be the start of a new era Welcome back to Ignition GT. Before the break, I gave you an in-depth review of the JAC T9. And now it's time to find out what my two guests think of the new Chinese offering. First off, I enjoyed those looks. And I think the biggest thing has to be that big grill, which might be polarizing for some. Bernie, what were your thoughts on the styling on this car? Okay, so on the grill, polarizing for sure, at least from my point of view. Um, I'm not saying other people won't like it, yeah. sure. It, there's a lot of chrome going on there. You know, when, and when, when, I, when I think of the JSC and I think of the word grill, then I actually yes. think of those wrapper grills and I just see <laughs> a lot of bling. That's true, yeah. And if you look past the grill, if you manage to actually look past <laughs> the grill, look at the headlights. I mean, I'm just looking at the picture behind you. Yes. It's stunning. I love that design. Yeah. yeah. It's actually very imposing and it's such a broad vehicle. It, it looks really big it and really does. imposing on the road. Yeah. And we know buyers like that. And jumping inside, um, what did you feel of the finish and, you know, the, just the comfort creatures of a car? The seats are maybe a little bit hard, that kind of thing. But I can't really say I looked at it and thought it offended me. I yeah. Like it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I think the, um, the interior is pretty good for a Bucky. Um, Certainly not on the same level as a Ranger or an Amarok, but um, I think in terms of features that you get, it's pretty much on par and it does what it needs to do. The only thing that bothered me a little bit was the driving position. Mm. I just didn't have quite the range of adjustment on the steering yeah. wheel and the seat that I would have liked. Yeah. So for you, it probably would have been fine because yeah. you're shorter, yeah. but I couldn't lower the seat low enough for me. Sort of match the steering. Yeah, but I drove it up to Sanin and yes. back for a weekend, um, which was a good uh, like six, seven hundred Ks over the course of, and it was actually fine. You know, wow. I didn't feel fatigued yeah. after the journey. Um, so yes, it's not, m maybe not perfect, but it's also not really a deal breaker. Yeah. I actually wanted to ask you just going into that drive because you had an extensive one. They have a two litre does about 250 kilowatts, 400 newton meters. Did you feel that that engine was enough for that bikey or did you feel like it lagged a bit? Uh, so we had the 4x2 version on test. Um, I don't know in 4x4 guys like mm -hmm. how, how I would feel about, because it has the same power figures. Yeah. Um, but like on the open road, overtaking is easy. Um, the gearbox is responsive, so we were five up in the car and going up and down Machubas Kluwev, yes. and it was fine. You know, I never felt that it's lacking. And of course, the great advantage of this power powertrain is the efficiency. So, uh, JAC themselves claim a figure of 7.8 liters per hundred, yes. and I managed to get it down to 7.3 oh, wow. for the entire trip, the average which is very impressive yeah. and you know this is to all the naysayers out there who are always <laughs> going on about chinese exactly. cars and their fuel consumption so it is possible you know sure and to talking about those naysayers what could put their mind at ease just looking at this product i mean vw has just bought 50 percent share in jc do you think that will put their mind at ease and 
you know, just looking at the pricing as well, um, who do you think is worried about the T9? If we just look at JSC in South Africa, yeah. the company's been, been here for a number of years. They have several products they um, already available for a long time. They have a decent uh, network of, uh, you know, sales network and service network. And at the end of the day, that's important. Yeah. If you look at the top tier competitors like Toyota, who have hundreds of dealerships and service points across the country, yeah. that is what makes them successful. It's the lack of service um, service points that that uh, mean problems for people who, who buy new vehicles. So I don't think J JSC is in that position. I think mm -hmm. they have enough service and uh, uh, their dealership network is big enough to put people's mind at ease. Um, and at these prices, I mean, starting price is 550,000 Rand. Yeah. And uh, the range topping uh, derivative 4x4, four four, et cetera, et cetera, the T9 yeah. um, is 660. 659 around there, yeah. Six, 659 yeah. Uh, yeah. was the last figure sure. I looked at. And at those prices, just about everybody needs to be worried. It is a great package for that car. So definitely we'll see how it does in the market. I am quite interested to see. <laughs>